many, many millions of moons ago lived a god from Roman sages. His head was holding gorgeous horns, and he had a man-like upper torso. But even though he was the god of the forest, he had the look of a horse and the legs of a horse on his backside and the front feet of a goat. And if you listen very well, you might still hear the sound of his songs played on his span flute. Hello, my cutiest of all cutinesses. Today, I am a fawn. I am the only female fawn. And as queen of fawns, I am the last one responsible to keep our species alive. So every fawn in the forest is my mate. And if you want to see how I became this gorgeous, wonderful creature, you'll just have to keep on watching as it's getting started. Right? Now! Hello, my sweet peas. Today I am going to do a mythical creature that had, and I'm gonna check to be sure, it had the back legs of a horse, the front legs of a goat, the body of a normal man, it had horns that came down in a tip. The creature that I am talking about was the mythical fawn. Now, a fawn is normally male and plays a pan flute or a flute. Now, I don't have a flute with me right here, but I do have my makeup and with my makeup I'm going to try to transform myself into a blue sexy female fawn because if you want to keep the mythical creature alive it has to find his mate doesn't it? So let's begin! <laughs> I have prepped my face with um, moisturizer, face primer, foundation, concealer and powder. So it's all prepped and primed and ready to start. And I'm gonna begin by cleaning off my hands because they're full of foundation and powder and concealer and primer and all the stuff that I have put on my face. So, I want to make my fawn blue. I have made a headpiece and I am very sorry I didn't film how I made it. Let's begin. I want to start with a little base on my eyes and I am going to take a... This is a flat one but you can use a round one, a fluffy appliment brush and I want to start with a white base and instead of using white eyeshadow I'm gonna use cream makeup now maybe this pencil is going to be too fluffy to apply that I am gonna try with a round precision brush because they are more stiff and as this is a cream that's not very easy to use, I must admit. 
I want to use this as one, a sticky base for the eyeshadows that I'm going to use, but two, also as one of my colors. And my fawn is going to be animal like, but I want to have it, yeah, like I said, a bit sexy, you know. And I want to go with a makeup that will go like that, in the shape of a leaf. Yeah, why not? Let's make the shape of a leaf. I'm also going to take it underneath my eye so that the leaf is bigger the idea of a leaf. Thank you for coming up with that. Am I talking to you or am I talking to myself? We don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. A good product to use for this is the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk or you can use a very light concealer. I'm going for this cream paint. A much stickier substitute for water activated makeup paint. That is about okay, like that. And I am working my way up because the headpiece that I made is very wide and I could go wide to go along with that headpiece but I think it's gonna be more of an effect that I want if I do the opposite. I want to keep my face elongated and the headpiece and the horns will come here so it's I got it on a foam head, ready. I've been playing with uh, hot glue guns and my nails have melted. <laughs> and they're full of glue, so... Uh, okay. And why not make this leaf with more than one tip? Now that's nice. I can keep on adding tips. Three tips. Now, what I'm gonna begin with is white eyeshadow, and I'm gonna pop that with any brush. This is a paintbrush from the craft store. I am going to set this. Especially the inner corner that's going to be highlighted anyway with white eyeshadow. And as we have that cream base, the white eyeshadow is going to be visible because white eyeshadow mostly doesn't give the uh, color that I like. I have a very pretty silver in this palette and I got shimmery blue and I got a beautiful blue itself and this palette I have used for my um, what was it? My blue creeper and it is very gorgeous and shimmery this one. So I am First, gonna take silver because I'm gonna build from light to dark this time. So I'm going with the same brush to take a bit of silver and start from the inner corner on that white eyeshadow about a centimeter silver all around.
And then I want to go over to a light blue, so I'm going to switch from this palette. So I'm going to mix and mingle, which you can also do, of course. And I'm starting, and I keep on using my same brush. It's easy, less to clean. And I'm going to start in the center of the eyelid, following from the silver, actually. Gently, with the fluffiness of this brush, I'm going to bring the blue and what I do on my upper eyelid, I also do on my lower eyelid. I already like it. So again, I'm going one color darker. And that I am going to bring in my crease. And around my eye corner. So that there still is an eye makeup in this shape. But then from where the outer corner of my eye is so let's say the middle of that tip I am feathering this blue out And there are no rules for a makeup like this. If you want to go to there or back down, do whatever you like. Because it is a mythical creature, which I haven't come across in real life lately. So I don't think it matters how you see your fawn. I just start and we'll see what we get. I start off with a basic idea, but what it's gonna be like in the end, I never know. Now I am going to the beautiful bright blue in this palette, which is that. And I'm not going to put too much pressure where I meet the other blue because I don't know how pigmented or how dark this one's going to be. So I start on the outer edge. And the advantage of using just a paintbrush is it has a tip so you can flick your points there. But you can also use it to do an edge. Or to feather two colors together to blend and like you saw I'm still using the same brush as in the beginning I started off with it still using it and it meets the other color nicely so I don't have to be scared to overlap And I'm also using this blue for my outer V. I'm just going up instead of making a wing. And I'm leaving the first tip white. So you see I stay light in the front and I go to darker. There will be lining afterwards so It'll all come together in the end, like it always does. Now I am taking a clean brush. I hope it's clean. And I'm taking white eyeshadow because this tip, I didn't really ex 
accentuate because I didn't know I was going to keep it white. Now I am going to use a blue eyeliner which is a very dark one. Very dark blue. Very dark blue. And I'm going to do my lower eyeliner with that. But two third because I want to keep the inner corner white. Just the waterline a touch. That's nice in that white or in that lighter lining like that and I thought about doing my upper eyelid with that too but I'm not going to do that I am going to use real liquid liner because I want to have a nice base for my lashes to stick on to so let's get started with just black liner And I do want to make a big wing, not very far out, but I mean in width, in thickness. And because it's an animal, I really want to have an extra inner tip. The face is human, but this is a feminine one, you know, this is a female. Now with this same liner, I am going to do an outline Just a shadow actually from the tips No, you don't have to do that because it is very nice like this too but this makes it more visible from a distance this is more up close this is more the effect that you'll get from a distance if you really outline the tips I am going to outline this too Now, if you connect this, you can let your wing go further out. Mm. Yes, you can really make it what you want. Blue waves, blue flames. Just the look of this fawn. <laughs> I 
made a huge mistake there, but I don't care. I'm gonna leave it like that. It doesn't have to be exactly the same on both sides. We just keep it like we want. I can let these two cross. It doesn't matter. That's the advantage of mythical creatures. They're so mythical that nobody exactly knows how they look. So you can never be wrong. That's even better. Now you get those crossed effects along the lines. <laughs> I love it! I really do! I really love it! Now, for the eyes, I really think this is enough, but I would love to have a shade here. Uh -uh. Okay, I will make this a double eyelid. Mm. I do that in a wiggling motion because my skin is older and very thin and if I don't tighten it up my lines will never be straight and if I wiggle instead of pulling one line the wrinkles are not gonna follow the tip of my brush that much. Oh my god, I love that. It makes me think of a ballerina, but it's so... it's... yeah. I always say that about my look. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. But I do. It's, again, something totally different than what I'm used to. So now I am going to work off the shading of my face, but first I'm going to put on a bit of mascara later on and I'm not gonna use that second lash line I'm using my real lash line some people if they do a look like this and the eyes are made bigger they put falsies along this line and I'm not going to do that on purpose I want to have them where my eyes really are. I cannot decide right now if I am going to put falsies on the lower lash line because I have to get those scalar lenses in my eyes and that is not simple. Scalar lenses are great, wonderful, beautiful, but you don't see much with them. They intend to not perfectly stay on my pupil because I've got very small eyes and to get them in is really a disaster. It's very careful work or my makeup is ruined. So, it's always a risk to use those contacts, but they are blue and actually I am building this entire look around the blue of those lenses. So, that's a little bit special, isn't it? Now, I was thinking about using this highlighter in this highlighter and I want to use an eyeshadow but this blue eyeshadow is very very vibrant so I would like to have a blue that's not too shimmery so maybe I will just put my brush in this entire circle here and I will use a fluffy brush instead of 
my normal contour brushes. I'm going to try to not make it look too dirty. Guys, if you use eyeshadow to contour, it often, very fast, gives a dirty look, a filthy look. And that I want to avoid. And I turn, I twist around with my brush, or otherwise you're going to have dark light and middle, and, and you're not going to have that mixed well enough. I am going to shade a lot on the neck part. Because I am half animal, you know, I'm half animal. Now, for highlights, I'm going to use this, and with a fan brush, I'm going to start And of course this makes my entire face bluish and shimmery and different, but that is the intention. And now to have some more sparkle, I am using the same brush, but I'm going to take my normal highlighter, the golden one. Take my arms out of the sleeves and I will put my shoulders visible too because the font has got an upper body that's human so I can shade and work it off extra. I don't know if it's going to be very visible because my headpiece turned out to be a little bit huge and I have to get it completely in the image or I have worked on it all morning since very early this morning I started so it would be a real thin to not completely see it. Now, to make sure that my uh, falsies are gonna stick well to the eyes and that it's not gonna fade, the cream liner that I've used doesn't dry completely, so I'm using just black eyeshadow and I'm gonna tab that along my lash line just on the moving eyelid, the rest I normally, normally won't touch anymore. And then what I have to do are my lips. And I got a nice blue liner here, pretty color. It's a shimmery color and I'm going to start outlining my lips with that. Mm, gorgeous. Now, first I'm gonna put on my falsies. 
Now I'm taking a darker blue pencil to make an ombre lip, so I'm going to start on the outer tips of my mouth corners. Don't mind the helicopter, it's just my husband coming home from work. Not. <laughs> I wish. Now this doesn't make it very dark, so what I'm gonna try to do is just take a small appliment brush like this and take some blue eyeshadow. There. I'm gonna see what that gives. Nice. Mm. That's what I want. Just a little accent on the cupid's bow. And the center I'm gonna accentuate. I can just take the eyeshadow that we were using on the eyes themselves, the lightest one. And just with my finger I'm gonna tap that on so that we have the same effect. And if you rub an eyeshadow on a lip, it becomes metallic. There you go. This is the completed look for today. But, of course, I have to add my props. Try to get those scalar lenses in my eyes and once that disaster has struck <laughs> I will put on the headpiece that I made and hope that I will get it in the image because it's so big. So this is the final result of my look as Queen of Fawns of the Lake. I'm the only female, a font, and I am the only blue font. I am connected to the water world as well as the forest. And I really want to thank you all for watching this makeup tutorial with me. <laughs> If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Leave some nice comments down below. Give me some thumbs up. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to see whenever I upload a new video. And I really hope to see you again soon in one of my next coming. Bye!